Determining the outputs really was a question of negotiation. We needed to consult with the business users and the academics to see what they could come up with and what they wanted as a wish list. We needed to be very flexible and it was decided that in the case of our research project, it would be useful to present directly to the business department that was interested in our research. We also enabled the academic to write a journal article. That was something that was key from their output. But small articles going into the House magazine, our Google Plus communities, things which really highlighted interest amongst the partners working within the business was very, very important in this instance. It meant we had to be quite flexible. We were able to produce short films and clips to put onto our intranet. And all of those things really built up into a, a, an acknowledgement by the business that this type of research was really important. So for me, this was a really exciting way to do research. So it's so different from what is often the conventional way that historians work, where they come up with their topics based on their own kind of independent research interests. I was involved in conversations with partners at different levels in the business right from the outset, uh, coming up with ideas for what research they would find useful to help them do uh, and face the kind of problems and challenges they are facing today. So right from the outset we had those conversations, we came up with this idea about working on the history of the partnerships pay policy, uh, being able to feed in interim findings, make sure I'm on track, that I'm really focusing on um, the kind of issues that the business would find useful and then having at the end the chance to communicate my findings and have that really in-depth discussion about how that research might influence uh, the decisions that are being taken today. What do you think worked in our particular project and about our relationship? So for me, I think the thing that really worked and has that long-term impact is the way that you made us think differently about how we approach the exhibition. I think we'd done one previously and it was very predictable, it was very corporate, mm. it, was, um, it was just telling us a, a kind of linear story about what the actions, activities had been. Mm -hmm. Whereas you challenged us to put the focus on something else, to look at the experience of women rather than what the brand had done. Mm. And that was really exciting way for us to look at it and we have tried to continue with that so to be more mindful of um, how people might interact with it to be mm. less um, conscious that we need to stick to the corporate line all the time okay and to um, maybe see the objects in a different way yeah and it, it did feel as if we were succeeding in both creating something that was publicly interesting mm. that raised questions about identity and history and beauty in a way that wasn't too didactic and that mm. was asking a lot of questions but at the same time that didn't that, that was something that enriched the company mm. which when we first got together and I remember our first meeting and you were uh, like well we can't say this we can't say that we can't say this mm. and I was like oh, we, I want to say this I want to ask this question mm. I want to make people think about this mm. and it was very much corporate versus mm. versus higher education and then we managed to just merge those two together mm. and not have to compromise no. by finding just uh, the right tone in the way that we interacted. No, I think it was very much, I mean, being honest about our different yeah. um, motives almost in mm. terms of what we were trying to achieve, but then understanding and appreciating where each other was coming from, yeah. but ultimately wanting to create a great exhibition. So it, we yeah. kind of managed to work our way through it. Yeah. I think neither of us felt we'd been compromised. Yeah. In terms of Ian's PhD, I would quite like there to be something that I can share with my Barclays colleagues. Um, some of the people that Ian has interviewed have asked me, um, can they see the end result? Um, and I'm not sure that any of them are particularly going to want to plough through a whole PhD thesis, um, but I think if we could look to create something sort of shorter and more of a summary, highlights, then that would be something I'd be interested in having because I think it could be a really strong advocacy tool for the archives. We've tried not to see them as problems. We've tried to just embrace them and to let the project develop almost naturally as a result of issues and challenges. 
Uh, so with our first PhD, which we'd originally set out as being how does Barclays use the archives and how can we make more use of them in the future, it has now become more of a how does Barclays use the archives. Um, but actually I can see that's going to be really good for our advocacy within Barclays because Ian has talked to lots of our clients and he's got some really good stories of what they've done with the archives 